Okay, so today we're going to apply some refractory lining to the double forge. This will help with insulating the forge and retaining heat within it. I hope the additional lighting I've added helps make this video easier to see the details. If you have any recommendations or questions, feel free to place them in the comments. As usual, we're going to take our usual safety precautions. We have gloves because we don't want to get any of the chemicals on our hands, safety goggles because we like to see things, and we have a respirator because lungs are important. The steps are pretty simple. What we want to do is follow manufacturer's directions, which state that we must make sure to mix very well so that the product is uniform. We will use a paddle mixer. The name of the product, by the way, is Green Patch 421. I picked up locally at a ceramic supply shop, and this cost me only $36.50 for the whole gallon. Okay, let's get started. Opening these containers is not generally hard, but can sometimes require some force. I also have some cheap spackle knives that uh, we will not wind up using, unfortunately. I had to get a different pair of safety goggles to fit with my respirator, as uh, the ones I first put on were not covering my eyes right. This can be a little bit difficult to open these types of containers, so I went and got a screwdriver to act as a lever to pop it off. Now, all this liquid that you see on top here, it's the binder that holds everything together. Don't pour this off. It's necessary to mix this into the mortar. Now, while I go and mix, I just want to say that this stuff can be thinned with water for getting into tight spaces, but this can lead to some cracking as the water dries. Also, calling this a mortar, even though this can be used to fill joints between fire bricks, seems a bit odd for me. This is not a product that cures like typical cement-based products. This is a product that uses water glasses, a glue, to bond the refractory materials together. So. It's more refractory than mortar, but can be used as mortar, I suppose. I'll remove the panel here. And as you can see, this is very sticky stuff. And once I get it on my gloves, it's obvious that this is going to be much messier than I thought. I really hope that the lighting is better for everybody this time than the last time. I know it's not perfect yet, but I purchased a few LED work lights to illuminate the space. I still need to play around with the mounting and placement of the lights to help illuminate things a bit better. And I should probably clear off my workbench a little also. It's a bit cluttered. Now, as you can see here, this product has some fibers in it. According to the MSDS, this product contains kaolin, and I suspect that these are there to help increase the strength of the material more than for heat resistance. Anyway, I continue to mix this well. When the consistency feels just right, I start applying it by just smearing it in the forge. I start with the top facing down, because I want to make sure I keep the burner ports clear with just a thin coating on the inside so that it doesn't interfere with the flame. Then I just spread it with my fingers like a blind girl in a Lionel Richie music video making a clay bust of Lionel. Seriously, this is not a neat process and I don't think it needs to be neat. Just make sure that the lining is mostly even and you cover all the rigidized wool. 
as you can see, I'm trying to be neat. I'm trying to keep bits of of this green patch mortar off of places where it doesn't belong. But it just keeps getting on everything. Oh, just keep smoothing it out and applying it. Smooth it out and apply it. And just so you know, this is, has a very, very rough texture. This is uh, gritty, is a word for it. And when it dried, it actually looks like uh, stucco. So now I turn the forge and get at it from the other side, doing exactly the same thing I did on the first side, making sure the burner ports are clear and the product is applied evenly. It's about the only thing you can do. this point I decide these gloves are done and I need to go get some new gloves so I try to retain as much of the product off of these gloves as possible and go get another pair to be honest this wasn't as good of an idea as I thought it would be because it only helped for a few minutes before they got full of mortar and got nasty again. At this point we're going to flip the forge over and we're going to apply the mortar liberally again to all the places where I missed. Just make sure that everything is covered evenly. That's all you need to do. Now that I've basically got it everywhere, all I'm doing now is looking in there and from different angles, moving it from side to side to make sure that there aren't any small spots that I've missed. Be thorough. This is important. And keep the burner ports clear. You want to make sure that when the, the, burner port, the burners are in those ports, and they're actually firing, that there's nothing obstructing, obstructing that flame. And right about there, that's it. I'm done. Just smoothing it out a little bit and you can see what it looks like right there. Probably should have slowed that bit of video down a bit. And try to get as much back into the bucket again. And then we're gonna get rid of the gloves and start with our cleanup process. First by making sure that the bucket is sealed tight you do not want this to dry out on you and then uh, well looks like we have some use for these putty knives after all we use them to scrape down this table get all this dust and whatever got stuck on there off and tossed into the trash all in all this took about 30 minutes total time and went pretty easily with any luck I'll be firing this forge up for my next video if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing. I have lots more stuff coming down the pipe, and I hope to get my quality to increase with each video. If you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to place a comment below. I'll try to get to them all. Thank you, and see you next time.